how are you? I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. I know that I am. Um, today, wow, I'm like so excited and also so nervous. Today, we are doing uh, the first collaboration of Glomus and it is with, uh, I can't believe I'm even like saying these words out loud right now. It is with Raw Beauty Christy. Um, and Christy, she, I've been watching her since before I even started my YouTube channel a couple of years ago. She was one of the first people I really found while my search for makeup was starting and like when I was starting to do my makeup. And I have always been so in awe of so many things about her. Number one, she's so insanely talented with makeup and truly like I'll be like watching a video of hers but I'm just kind of like listening and then I'll look over and she's done like a quadruple cut crease and like a beautiful <laughs> like glowing to the gods foundation base and I'm just like how she's so insanely talented and one of the things I've loved about Christy is she is one of the most genuine and down-to-earth people in the beauty community she's just so incredibly kind and so nice and such a real human being and being able to talk to her and just like have conversations with her not only about this club but about other things and she she's amazing um if you are not already subscribed which I don't know why you wouldn't be uh please 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 go subscribe to Christy she's absolutely one of my favorite people on YouTube and a truly like not to be like an ass kisser but it's like honestly an honor to be able to collab with her and do this type of video with her. And just to give you kind of a vibe of how Christy is on her channel I'm gonna include a quick clip um just so you guys can kind of see like how she is. Conversation that a lot of people have been having and that is about just the insane amount of launches and makeup being released and new makeup brands sprouting out every day it seems. ColourPop is the main brand that does this. I mean, they know they do it. They talk about it often. I think I recall somebody saying that ColourPop mentioned that they were like the fast fashion of makeup. And I mean, I don't know if that's something to strive for, but I would have to wholly agree. I love ColourPop and I think their products are really high quality and also really low price. I'm not saying that I think that it's good, but it makes it a little bit more acceptable when they are accessible to a lot more people given that they're a lower price point. But when brands like Anastasia Beverly Hills start doing the exact same thing as ColourPop, it's when I start going, hold up, wait a minute, what? <laughs> Hi, it's editing me. I would also be a fool to not include this clip of Rob Beauty Christie as Guy Fieri. I've seen it floating around Twitter, but I finally watched the whole video and I'm dying, so I need to include it. So this is not her normal content, but also like I think perfectly describes her channel. We're rolling out, looking for America's favorite diners, drive-ins, and dives. So that is Christy. If you're not already subscribed, please, please, please go subscribe to her and show her some love because she is truly like a gift to the makeup community on YouTube. Um, how this came about was actually a couple of months ago maybe. I saw that she had tweeted about wanting to do more commentary style videos. And I was like, Christy, I'm your girl. <laughs> I was like, I want to hear your commentary. Like, I want to hear what you have to say about situations because I think she's very intelligent and she has a lot of opinions on things. And I was like, I want to hear what you have to say about these things. And so I had this idea to do this collab. This is an idea that I've been toying about making a video about for a while because I think it's a really interesting idea. I think there's a lot of layers to this topic and I think it's something a lot of people have been thinking and feeling about the beauty community for a long time. Um, but I think it's not really been super talked about. Number one, because it could possibly like put some jobs at Jeopardy, so I think nobody really wants to talk about it. Um, but I thought Christy would have a really, really good kind of viewpoint on this as a person who is a lot bigger in the makeup industry and who has had a lot of success here on YouTube. And I also thought I might have an interesting perspective as a person who maybe is a little bit smaller and has a kind of different eye viewpoint from the small beauty community and everything like that. So the big topic for today is, is the influence slash makeup market bubble bursting. Uh, I don't think it's any secret that in probably starting in about 2016, 2017, we've seen a real rise, not only just the makeup industry, but people on YouTube and the makeup community here on YouTube really 
growing. <laughs> um, there's been a huge influx of people starting makeup channels. Beauty channels on YouTube are some of the highest earning and highest subscribed accounts on YouTube. The beauty community as a whole, I would say, is pretty massive and pretty substantial in the YouTube community. Um, while there are definitely like tons of people who watch YouTube that have no idea that our little side of the community exists, we make up a big big part of the community. And I think people in our community are also some of the first YouTubers to really go on to see fame in a more mainstream way. I see a lot of beauty influencers getting invited to like big award shows, movie premieres, uh, being like paparazzi, like being talked about in the mainstream media, whether it's uh, for a good reason or a bad reason. The beauty community has grown majorly on YouTube. And I think something a lot of people don't necessarily talk about is the fact that along with this major boom of beauty influencers and all of this, there has been a huge boom of money uh, for makeup companies and the makeup industry. Because what are we talking about on our channels? We're talking about makeup. And what are we mostly talking about, especially bigger beauty influencers? That would be new makeup. And it's no surprise that because of this, we're seeing more and more makeup brands pop up every day, whether it's more indie brands, uh, brands kind of branching off into sub brands, kind of like what ColourPop is doing, or even we're seeing a huge rise in celebrities starting their own makeup line, mainstream celebrities collabing with makeup brands. And we're seeing a huge rise in influencer brands and influencer collabs. A lot of influencers have makeup collabs. A lot of influencers are coming out with their own makeup. Accounts like Trend Mood get millions and millions of hits a day and is able to post content pretty much every single day, at least 10 to 12 pictures of new makeup because so much is coming out at so many times. Where before, a few years ago, really used to be like every, it was occasional, <laughs> they'd have like a big launch, like the naked palettes were like a huge thing, but it wasn't to the scale that it is now. With all that being said, there's been this rise and there's been this boom and p there's millions of dollars, billions of dollars, makeup is a billion dollar industry. There's billions of dollars at stake and there's all these people that have millions and millions of subscribers and all of this craziness. But the real question that I think a lot of people have been talking about is when is this train going to stop? Because it's not just going to grow and grow and grow and grow forever. Eventually we're going to see the bubble pop. And I think the big question is, is the bubble popping? Here's my opinion. So let's first talk about makeup companies, the business side of things. I absolutely think that the business side of things for makeup is absolutely popping. I think the new, 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 more, 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 bye, bye, bye. I think the consumerism and the rampant consumerism that is happening in the makeup industry is absolutely petering off. Uh, while I think we're still going to have those launches that are very hyped, like the Shane and Jeffrey launch is a really good example of that, a launch that was super, super, super hyped up. While I think we're still going to see those things of like really kind of a, a makeup craze, a, a product that's particularly sought after is going to do very well. I don't think makeup itself is dying. I think people are still interested in doing makeup and owning makeup. I think people want to own less. I think the way that brands have been pushing out makeup, brands like ColourPop, brands like Honest Anastasia really recently. I have a whole video on that about the rise, the fall of Anastasia Beverly Hills, which is a very dramatic title, but like also kind of true. And I know Christy talked in her anti haul about that. Brands like Too Faced and Tarte who don't seem to be able to keep up with what the consumers actually want and are putting out a lot of subpar products. Brands that you don't hear a lot about like Cover FX or Stila or like It Cosmetics. Brands you're not hearing a ton about. Brands that were really hyped and are now kind of dying down like Kylie Cosmetics. <laughs> She's nice. She jumped off that ship before it sunk. We're seeing definitely an influx in products, but I think we're not seeing as much of an influx in sales. I don't think people are running out to go buy every little thing like they used to be in 2016. And I think there's a few reasons for that. I think number one, you can only own so much makeup. Makeup is not like a one use product. You don't use an eyeshadow palette once and then throw it away and go buy a new one. You buy makeup because it's gonna be in your life for like two or three years, possibly longer, depending on how you feel about expiration dates. But you're buying makeup because it's going to be there for like a while, like you're going to using this type of stuff for a while. And the reality of the situation is people only have two eyelids, one pair of lips, and two pairs of like two cheeks. Like people can't use hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different blushes, bronzers, highlighters. I think what the hope would have been would have been that even though someone like me who owns a lot of makeup and is probably going to slow down, I'm kind of phasing out of this, is that the new generation of like young teenagers and young adults who are just getting into makeup, I think the hope was that they were going to compensate 
late for this, but because kids are starting to get into makeup so much younger, kids who love James Charles and love Zoella, they're getting in so much younger that they were almost a part of this boom and they have too much makeup now too. We're seeing a huge rise in people saying, no, I don't want this. No, this is not interesting. The comments under Trend Moods posts on Instagram are brutal. People don't really want new makeup as much as we're getting it. And while people are still buying things, I would have to imagine that they're not buying as much as they were in the times of 2016 and 2017 and even early 2018. I would have to imagine that things have started to kind of hit her off. <laughs> I would imagine that people are kind of over it and I think going forward you're gonna see a lot more popularity from brands who do more consistently good launches than brands who are putting out a ton of quantity with the exception being ColourPop. I think ColourPop is going to keep doing very well and I think the reason for that is their price point. I think they are kind of saved from all of this kind of consumerism because their price point is so good and their quality is so good. I think they're going to be fine but I think brands like Too Faced and Tarte and Urban Decay, oh my gosh I forget about Urban Decay, are we're going to start seeing them, the bubbles bursted for them. I think their time of being like number one and the most talked about brands has definitely passed and I think there's a lot of reasons for that but I think the main one is they did not focus on quality they focused on quantity because they saw that people were in the mindset of buy 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 and so they wanted to accommodate that and now people are sick of it. One thing that I will say that's kind of interesting which I think could honestly make everything I just said irrelevant I think there's a very big difference between being a makeup wearer and being a makeup wearer who watches YouTube. So all of this perspective that I'm having comes from being a person who's a makeup wearer who watches YouTube. There are people who wear makeup that don't watch YouTube. I don't know how they learned how to do it, but like there are people who wear a lot of makeup that never watch YouTube videos, know nothing about the beauty community on YouTube. They just like playing with makeup. They just like, I have a friend like that. She just enjoys makeup. She doesn't really care about anything to do with YouTube or beauty gurus. She just kind of likes doing her makeup in the morning. And there's tons of people like that. So in a sense, this is all coming from a little bit of a biased perspective on my front of like having so much experience with beauty YouTube and how I know people in the beauty YouTube community are feeling but I think it will be interesting to see if people in the just makeup community in general just people who are consumers of makeup it will be interesting to see if they also feel the way that we're feeling and are feeling that burnout. I think the only way we wouldn't see the bubble pop numbers wise for brands would be if normal consumers who aren't people that watch beauty YouTube feel differently than those of us who do. I hope that makes sense. I feel like there's a lot of subcategories to this particular topic that make it a little bit more confusing but I think that's kind of the only outlier where we're not really sure like what's going on with people who because they don't share their opinions because they're not watching YouTube videos to share their opinions. I also think then if we're going to talk about this category we have to talk about influencers because a lot of people are saying that the influencer bubble is bursting. That people aren't as interested in makeup influencers. They're not as interested anymore in people like Manny and Laura Lee and all of these sort of bigger influencers, right? And that their time has come and passed. Their prime time is over. The beauty community's prime time is over because the makeup industry's prime time is over. I think that's kind of the assumption that's being made is because less makeup is being sold that that means the beauty community is dying. I personally, and maybe it's just because I'm like really hopeful that the community I just became a part of pretty recently isn't like dead. But I personally think just seeing things from a smaller creator perspective, I think it's not necessarily that beauty gurus are going to die. I think they're going to change. I think the the whole concept of the beauty community and the way that it's kind of set up right now is going to change. And I think in the next few years, we're going to see a real shift in the hierarchy of people at the top. I think people like James Charles and Jeffree Star will always kind of remain at the top because their James Charles's content to his credit isn't really review or consumer based. It's really based in like different challenges and he does all these like kid friendly things that kids are always really going to like. So he's kind of like doing that. And then I think with Jeffree Star, even though he's more review based, people really seem to just like him for his personality. So that's kind of why people go and watch him. I think the people that are in trouble are the people like Jaclyn Hill, like Manny MUA, like Laura Lee, people that are at the top that are very heavily focused on telling you what new makeup to buy. I think the beauty community, the shift we're going to see is we're going to see a lot more people who are anti-consumerist. Samantha Ravendahl did a no buy this year and it was incredibly successful. People have loved it. People 
have loved her not accepting PR anymore. People have loved her kind of saying, I'm going to use what I have. She's probably one of the bigger gurus that I've seen who's doing like shop my stashes, who's doing videos about using up her makeup. And I think we're going to see even more of that in 2020. And I think we're going to see a little less anti-consumer style beauty, beauty YouTubers rising and kind of coming up. I think we're going to see more beauty YouTubers who are a little bit more unconventional, who are a little bit more like real. Relatable. Um, I, I think people might be a little bit sick of kind of the really perfect backgrounds, really pristine sort of like look all the time. People who look really perfect and talk really perfect and do their makeup really perfect. I think we're going to see more relatable content in the next coming year. Um, I think we're going to see a shift of what people want. And I think I've already seen it on a lot of beauty forums and on Twitter and even in my comment section, I and my friends comment sections and people I watch comment sections, a lot of the comments are, I love how real you are. I love how relatable you are. I love that I can relate to what you're talking about. I love how you're not just running out and promoting every new thing. I love that you're not bought by companies because I think that's a really important piece to it too, where the companies and the influencers kind of come together and that bubble bursting. I think the real reason that a lot of these bigger gurus screwed up is because the trust is kind of gone. Once everyone found out how much money people were making to promote products and how they weren't properly disclosing them or being honest about them, I think a lot of trust went out the window and I think that ruined a lot of people's content because before people would go to them for reviews. They would go to them to see if they should buy that new makeup. But now if you don't know if that person was paid that crazy $60,000 figure to talk about that blush, if you don't know and you can't trust them, you're not going to go to them. So I think people are turning more to smaller creators and they're turning more to people who aren't being paid and are bought the products themselves and are being completely honest about it and don't have those biases. I think that's what people are looking for because you can really no longer trust the people who are at the top of the top because of their history. And I think that's where the other problem lies is I think you're going to see a lot of brands not really sponsoring content anymore because I think they're not getting the return on investment. They're paying, you know, Manny MUA $25,000 to talk about this, this bronzer, right? They might not make $25,000 in sales anymore because nobody is really listening or watching Manny MUA anymore to see what he has to say because the jig's kind of up on that. I think gone are the days of like shady dealings, you know what I mean? And also I think a lot of up and coming people that I see in the makeup industry and a lot of people that are kind of mid-tier that I think could really rise in 2020 are people who don't necessarily take makeup sponsorships or if they do they very clearly disclose when that is. I see a real insurgence of bigger beauty gurus that are kind of mid-tier taking sponsorships from brands that are not makeup related, which I think is so smart. I think it's okay to do sponsorships, but when you're doing a sponsorship with a brand, it can be a question of credibility. It can be a question of, are you telling the truth? And I think that's where brands and beauty gurus really kind of screwed up the makeup industry in a way. Brands are so intertwined with the top tier level of influencers in its own way. Top tier beauty influencer world has become its own type of corporate you don't see a lot of people at the top that aren't intertwined with that. And I think that's where people are kind of like steering away from it. I don't know. There's always going to be an audience for people who are very brand friendly and people who are very cookie cut. I feel like that sounds mean to say cookie cutter. People who are a little bit more like, this is how you do a smoky eye. Like there, I think there'll always be some type of audience for that. But I think where you're gonna see people really getting bigger numbers is people who aren't just making standard beauty guru content, people who have opinions about things, people who will say, hey, this launch from this brand, that sucked. Like I, people who aren't necessarily ingrained in that culture of working with brands and caring about your relationship with brands, I think you're going to see a real rise in that. Now, the real question is, if we do see a rise in that and we see a rise in this anti-consumers content, we see a rise in people who aren't really caring about brands, there can be an argument made that it would be easier for those people to not care about brands when they're smaller because they don't have contact with those brands. It's very easy for me to tell you that everything from Too Faced sucks <laughs> from their holiday collection. It's easy for me to tell you that because I've never talked to anyone from Too Faced. Now, if somebody like me got like a million subscribers, I probably would have talked to somebody from Too Faced at that point. So there's the question of when you do start growing, can you talk the talk? Can you walk the walk? Can you stay away from that type of culture?
culture can you resist what so many other people seem to have gotten really sucked into who are top tier influencers? And I think that's really the question. I think there is a way to have a balance, to have relationships with brands while also remaining true to yourself and remaining unbiased. Uh, but I think a lot of people have had a very hard time finding that balance. So I think it's going to be really interesting. I think we are going to see a change, but I don't think by any means the influencer bubble is bursting. I think we are seeing the end of people making millions and millions of dollars <laughs> from makeup, like makeup sponsorships. I think we're seeing a little bit of an end to that, but I don't think we're seeing an end of beauty influencers. And I don't even think we're seeing an end of makeup. I think we're just going to see more people doing different things and companies I hope, changing the way that they do things in the next year. I am very interested to hear what you guys have to say about this topic because I think it's so interesting and I think it's what a lot of people have been thinking about for a while now. Um, and I'm really excited to hear Christy's take on it because I think she will have a very, very interesting perspective. Um, that's it for me. I hope you guys like this video. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Thank you so much to Christy for <laughs> collabing with me. This is literally a dream. If you had told me two years ago that I would be like doing this, I would have never ever conceptually believed that. Um, I love her so much and I'm just so thankful that she wanted to do this with me and was willing to be a part of Glomus. Um, please, if you're not already subscribed to her, please go check her out. Um, and if you like this video, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. I'm honestly just so happy you're watching me. Thank you so much for being here. My merch, my social media and everything I'm wearing on my face will be linked down below. And I believe I did a look for Talk Tutorial Tuesday yesterday when you're watching this. So if you want to go see how I created this look, you can go do that. In my description, there will also be a link to register to vote. That's right. Fa la 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 vote. Uh, <laughs> I hated that one. I'm trying to do these like puns for voting, but I'm not very good at them. Please go register to vote and please make sure that you are going to be able to have your voice heard in the 2020 election because it is very important. Um, and if you're not from the United States and that link does not apply to you, please make sure that you're using your voice in a positive way, that you're just making sure you know what's going on in your country. Make sure you're knowing you know what's going on in your part of the world. Make sure you're using your voice in a positive way because the world absolutely needs more of that. Um, I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye!